What's up, it's Mr. Get Your Buzz Up. We here with Get Your Buzz Up. I'm sitting here with Soul, chilling, getting it in, enjoying the funk sway of the couch and the plants and all that good stuff. So how's it going? It's going great, man. It's uh, really cold here in Madison. A lot of snow. A lot of snow. A lot of snow, man. It was like negative 20 and 30 degrees, I think, last week or the week before, something like that. It was crazy. Yeah, I saw a video. People were throwing... uh Hot water out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah They're slitting their wrists and it was freezing <laughs> and they couldn't. People were trying to kill themselves and they weren't uh, They weren't dying right. They kept coagulating. And nice. It was just a bad day for. Just a bad day overall. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I had the pleasure of seeing you at the Frequency the other night and it was the first time that uh, I've got to see you perform. And I think it was the first time for a lot of people. And the one thing that everybody kept talking about is how you were r- rapping over hood trap beats but you were talking about politics and all this this crazy crazy shit basically instead of talking about drugs and hoes and all that stuff you were talking about some real topics so like is that a normal thing for you or is it just something you said oh fuck it i'm gonna do this now yeah i mean you know i was rapping over really crazy noisy experimental beats with like super poetic stream of consciousness verses for a really long time and I would play these shows and I could be talking all this shit and no one would understand what I was talking about because I was talking so fast and the music was all over the place and then you know all along I was listening to Jay-Z and 50 Cent and all this you know gangster shit and um and at the same time I was listening to a lot of folk music like Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger and I really liked the way that artists like Bob Dylan or Jay-Z or whoever when they're singing like you can understand what they're saying and I mean for me rap was always just about like spitting the most intricate craziest flows and um Um, and so I don't know around 2007 I started like trying to integrate more of that approach into my music um, and just like rapping over those kind of beats and um, yeah and so that's basically I mean I've been doing that for a long time um, and uh, I mean obviously it's different now that I'm working with pain one because we're making we're really making the kind of shit I've been trying to make for a long time but yeah i mean it's it's subversive to me you know when i saw like the swag shit happening i was like okay rap is getting weird again um like people are like this kind of shit's cool now and there's two ways it can go it can become this like dumb internet meme shit or it can you know the the threads in the like in little b's music and that are like really intelligent uh you know it can go that way well it didn't go that way but I, I went that way. <laughs> so, you know. It's not, a, it's not a bad way to choose. It's not uh, going going this way is definitely not a bad thing compared to what's what's out there right now. So um, for people that may not know, how long have you been rapping and, and, and doing music and things of this nature? Um, I put out my first demo in 1992, uh, which is like 21 years ago. Um, you know, I was just a kid, you know, working at McDonald's, saving up money to get demos recorded, and um, and I've just been doing it ever since. Uh, I started Anticon in 1998, and, um, you know, ever since then, I've just been doing music full-time, except for I drove a cab in 2005 for a little while, which was really shitty, and I was kind of a janitor for about a month in 2007 or 2006 but other than that i've never worked and a I don't janitor ever work. or a custodian uh i mean i thought i was doing landscaping <laughs> and then next thing i knew i was uh cleaning shit out of bathrooms Fair enough. and i quit but i i did clean shit for a day and it was not cool <laughs> i imagine not 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 quite like rapping yeah, I mean, like, you know, you, dr- you drive a cab or become a janitor and clean other people's shit, and you think, oh, this is going to be really inspiring. I'm going to, like, learn something about the world. I, I just, you know, I just learned that um, there are people in Asia who don't put their toilet paper in the toilet. They put it in the trash can, and that's really disgusting. disgusting. Yeah, yeah. That's, that sounds very disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
So we're glad you're not doing that anymore now. <laughs> I, I was good at it, though. I was really, I was a damn good janitor. So, if, <laughs> you know, maybe I can earn an extra 100 bucks at these clubs cleaning up the bathrooms yeah, after, you know. That would be an interesting um, contract. I would love to be able to read that contract when, when it comes in. Hey, that man. Would be, I mean, I'll do, awesome. I'll do whatever, man. Whatever it takes. You yeah, know? I feel that. DIY. So uh, what, uh, over 20 years, that's a long time. What, what would you say is your biggest accomplishments within that within the 20 years um surviving uh i think i think the fact that i'm still doing it is my biggest accomplishment uh i mean there's certain things that i can mark and be like oh that was awesome like you know i'm heralded as being one of the pioneers of avant-garde hip-hop or alternative hip-hop or experimental rap like i helped start that scene um you know one of my greatest, I think just going to cool places, like playing shows in war zones or living in strange places and just, um, you know, having a great relationship or, you know, learning, you know, or just learning a ton of shit without going to college and just reading a bunch of books. Um, so I don't know. I don't have like one accomplishment like, oh, yeah, when I. You know, when I overthrew the U.S. when I overthrew the U.S. government, that was so cool. You know, I don't have anything like that, but um, you know, I think just just the fact that I've been able to maintain a good middle class income and just continually just keep pushing it, and, and, and that I still enjoy it. I think that's the greatest accomplishment. Yeah. Is I, I still fucking love this shit, and it's fun. Well, that's what's up. So, where's the strangest place you probably played at? Did a show at, and why? Well, there's a couple. I would say Bosnia. Um, you know, it was like it was supposed to be in a bomb shelter, um, and the bomb shelter got flooded. So we ended up having to play some coffee shop, and that was that was just really weird because I thought I knew what was up in the world. I thought I knew how fucked up shit was. <clears throat> and then I realized I go to Bosnia and all these people are trapped in their own country and they can't get out and they can't, um, you know, their lives are really fucking hard. And here I am, this American who's essentially just a tourist, just traveling through and, you know, looking at grave sites and shit. I mean, that was really dark and really fucked up. So, you know, going to places like that. Um, and another time I played... <laughs> There was like some show somewhere in Canada. It was like at a, it was on a reservation. Um, and I thought I was playing at a club, but it wasn't. It was like a barn at the end of this dirt road <laughs> on the res. And uh, like it was outside in the winter. And uh, there were like, you know, animal skulls up on the walls. And like, I mean, these motherfuckers loved it. And it was awesome. But I was like rapping and, um, you know, I can see the, my breath crystallizing in the air. I'm That's like, crazy. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, <laughs> it was awesome. I w I'll go back there anytime. <laughs> like, I'll play a, you know, I'll do a residency there. But it was uh, that was, it was cold. That's what's up. It was cold. <laughs> um, so, uh, you mentioned that you're working on a project with DJ Payne One, and uh, so can you tell us about that? Um, yeah, I mean, basically, him and I have been working on music together for about a year, and then around uh, August, we just started working on a full album, um, and it's, um, yeah, I mean, basically, like we, like you were saying, like we were doing like this kind of trappy shit with like really political, critical lyrics, um, and that's kind of what we came together to do, but then as we started making this album, you know, it started to have like a, like a rock influence and more of like a club influence. And, you know, it's just like we just I don't know. I don't want to say we got bored with what we were doing, but we just kept kept challenging ourselves to make different kinds of shit. And so people are expecting us to make like the, you know, this like political gangster album. But it's like it's it's I don't know, it's like much more than that. You know, it's, okay. it's, it's cool. It's cool. What's the what's the um what's the name of the album going to be? Death Drive. That's right. What's the reasoning behind that name? Um, you know, I just, I mean, I, I just like the phrase, but uh, it's a, Sigmund Freud had this idea about the death drive that humans have this like innate desire to return to a state of non-being and uh, so the, that we race towards our own destruction. Like everything we do is like suicidal, like humans are suicidal. And I don't necessarily believe that, but I like the, 
I like to playing with that idea. Um, so, so yeah, that's what the that's what. And what's when should we expect this project to be out? Uh, I think it's gonna come out in May. May, okay. And uh, iTunes, Google Play, all that stuff, or where will they be able to get it? I mean, the best place to get it um, would be on my website, soulone.org. Uh, that way, you know, me and Pain One will be getting the most amount of money for our work. Um, but we're also doing a Kickstarter, or we're doing some, so, so, uh, we're doing some sort of crowdsourcing campaign that we'll probably launch in the next month, which we'll be using to set the budget for the project. So, okay, and what are and um, for people that aren't familiar with uh, Kickstarter or things like that. Um, can you explain to them kind of what that is? Yeah, it's it's kind of like begging, but it's not. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, yeah, crowdsourcing is just like it's a new way of doing shit. Um, you know, people use it for films, and you basically you create a, a page, and people can donate X amount of money and get a project. Like for our album, if you donate a dollar, you get the album. Um, so that's I think that's pretty cool. But um, yeah, and so in this in this era where you know record sales are are all fucked up and record labels are all fucked up, artists can you know reach out to their fans and you know create a system where people have incentives like oh you you know you donate this much money you get pain one will fly to your house and cook you pizza you know. Uh, whatever. I don't know if he could cook pizza very well, so I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We're probably not going to do that. <laughs> like, so people do all kinds of shit. I mean, it's just a cool way of doing things, you know. That uh, that cuts out middlemen and empowers artists or developers to create something that wouldn't wouldn't otherwise happen. Otherwise, him and I would just be putting, you know, putting shit on credit cards or like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like I don't want to do that. I just want to. So, I want to know. So you dropped the album in May. Is there any uh, shows, any tours to coincide with the album? Yeah. Um, I mean, we're still kind of like figuring out what we're going to do. I mean, we're probably going to do, we're going to do some kind of world tour. I don't know. You know, we'll, we'll most likely go to Europe. We'll most likely tour the United States. Um, just really depends on if it makes sense. We'll just, you know, it could be 20 shows. It could be 200 Um you know, I, I just I'm not a big fan of grinding it out and just playing a show every day for mm -hmm. six months. I I'd, I'd rather be home googling myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, uh, <clears throat> in uh, that was awesome. So, uh, can you tell everybody where they can find you? Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, that kind of thing. Find me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all those places. Uh, Facebook, I'm Big Soul. B I G S O L E on Twitter. I'm at M C Soul. Um, my webpage is S O L E O N E dot org. On YouTube, um, S O L E O N E D O T org. Um, I am uh, and on Bandcamp. I'm just Soul dot Bandcamp dot com. All right, man. Well, thank you very much for thank sitting you. down with us. This is Mr. Get Your Buzz Up. We out.